In this Revit tutorial, I'm going to go over how you go about placing a door in your model. Uh, what I have on my screen is just a basic rectangle uh, for exterior walls. Mine happen to be the basic wall exterior brick on CMU, but it doesn't really matter uh, what kind of wall you have because Revit will cut out the door opening no matter what type of wall you have. To uh, place a door into your model, what you do is go to the Architecture tab, and right next to Wall, we have Door. When I click on the Door tool, my Properties palette will change to show a single flush door. That is the, uh, the only door that's by default loaded into my program. If I click on the Type Selector, you'll get a drop-down menu that shows you all of the different types of the single flush door you have. Remember that a door is the category, and that single flush is the family type, and then all the size variations um, are the types of doors. So if I want to put in uh, a door into my model, I will just click on it, and when I hover over um, kind of outer space or inside of my room, you get the no symbol. That's because things like doors and windows are hosted elements that must be in a wall. If I get near a wall and get on top of it, you'll see that now a little door appears, including the temporary dimension, so I can see where I'm placing it. Before I click, if I hover towards the outside of the wall, you'll see that it's going to swing out. And if I move my mouse a little bit, it will actually want to swing into the room. So you can get that um, oriented how you want it right away, whether it's in or out. And then if you tap the space bar, while I have it here, if I tap space, it'll change between a left and right swing in either direction. If I click where I want the door to go, or get it close, you'll see that a door appears and it actually cuts a hole into the wall. I'm just going to click on the Modify tool to get out of that command. So you'll see that even though this is a thick exterior wall, it still cut a hole through it. So as you're doing your modeling, it's important to keep in mind that um, you don't leave a gap where you want doors and windows and things to be, that you actually draw a solid wall, and Revit will cut that hole for you uh, when it's necessary. Once you've placed the door, you can click on it to activate it, and you'll see that it gets some arrow grippers here as well as the temporary dimensions. So you're able to click on those temporary dimensions and change that number, and it will move the door that way. And you're also able to click on these arrows to flip the door's direction and swing. So that was inserting the kind of generic single flush door that was available by default. But if I wanted a different kind of door, and I went up to door, what I need to do now is load a family. When you activate um, you know, one of these elements, like doors or windows or something like that, you will get the green contextual tab, and you'll see that load family is an option. We can also go to insert and load family if we're not in the middle of a function, but this is um, a perfectly fine way to do it. So I will click on load family, and then it will bring me to my, in my case, US Imperial folder where all of the Autodesk standard families are. And you'll see you have a variety of options in here for things that you can load into your project. The one I'm interested in right now happens to be doors. So if I click on that, it will open up all of the Revit families that I have available, going in alphabetical order from bifold two panel doors down to a sliding closet door. So really any of these are available to me right now. The ones that I want to avoid are these curtain wall doors. Those are something different, um, and those would in fact go into a curtain wall. Uh, but any of these other ones, if I click on, let's say double glass one here, it gives me a preview in a elevation view of what that door looks like. So I could just click on this one and hit open, or I could hold down the control key to click multiple doors, but maybe not everything in between, or the shift key to get a whole series of doors that are in a row. I would recommend really only bringing in the ones you think you're going to use because it can kind of 
junk your project up to have too many doors in there. Uh, but that's that's an option that's available to you if you know you're going to use a couple of them. Go ahead, hold down Shift or Control and bring them in right away. I'll just bring in the double glass one. Say open. And then that door will be ready for me to use, and that's because I had gone to Architecture and Door to load the family. So here's my double glass one door. If I click on the type selector and it drops down, you'll see that there are more types available to me, uh, different sizes. So I'll just maybe pick the largest one. And now if I hover over my wall in this area, you'll see it's the same basic thing except now I have a double door instead of just a single door. Just hit escape twice to get out of there. It's important also to remember that if you want to do a double door you should pick a double door not just put um, two single doors next to each other because you'll have a frame and everything in between so they they actually look differently um, in 3D or elevation views than they do in a plan view so um, a double door is an important choice if that's what you want. Um, and these work the same basic way that we can flip it back and forth. Uh, but of course you couldn't flip the swing because they only want to open um, kind of French door style. So that's the basics of inserting a door, moving it around, and loading a family.